Hey, welcome viewers to Food News and Chews. Hey, honey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's me. That's right. It, yeah. It's somewhere in there, right? <laughs> yeah, I love it. Guys, I love stay tuned or you might get stung because <laughs> we're going to be talking all about bees and honey for our food news segment. Sure, honey. Then the next segment, we're going up to Frankfurt to the mm -hmm. dot beekeeping supplies. We're going to be talking to Clay Guthrie and John Antonucci, some beekeeping sure. experts. Yeah. And then followed up, I'm going to do a nice caramelized Ooh, mushroom yummy. and shallot tart with lots of local honey. So okay, tuned. honey. The Capital City Beekeepers Association is a proud sponsor of Bee Friendly Frankfurt, March 8th and 9th, with a wide variety of activities to complement the annual Bluegrass Beekeeper School at Kentucky State University, including the beekeeping equipment and plant swap, tea and honey tastings, mead tastings, the beehive hairdo contest, and all the honey-themed meals and treats you can eat. For a full schedule of activities and other information, visit Capital City Beekeepers on Facebook. Welcome to Kentucky's largest commercial restaurant equipment and supply store. Seaworth Superstore is a 15,000 square foot chef's treasure chest. Seaworth Superstore is the store for those in the restaurant industry, churches, and catering. Find chefware, large equipment, refrigeration units, about anything needed for a volume event. Seaworth Superstore, in business since 1954. Offering free local delivery, so come on in and get hooked immediately. And a complete line of chef apparel. Seaworth Superstore, located at 1403 Versailles Road and SeaworthSuperstore.com. Why do chefs choose Lion's Farm beef? When I get things in the kitchen, I can tell like right off the bat. After I get done searing it or put it on the grill or roasting it or baking it or frying it or whatever I'm going to do, the second I cut into that thing, whether it's uh, you know the resistance on the fork or just the way it kind of slides across the knife, it's got to be right on from the get-go. And it seems like this, this beef does that every single time. Lion's Farm beef, available at Critchfield Meats and lionsfarm.com. America's oldest and largest manufacturer of beekeeping equipment since 1863 is Dedant. Dedant manufactures and supplies beekeepers with everything they need to start and keep beehives to produce locally grown honey. Dedant also publishes the best educational materials, from books to the monthly magazine, the American Bee Journal. Come visit Dedant, warehouse conveniently located off Chenault Road, Frankfort, Kentucky. Open from 8 to 5, Monday through Friday, or call 502-848-0000. Today's shoppers are informed. When shopping for the family meal, today's shopper chooses Critchfield Meats for fresh, all-natural quality meats guaranteed. Make the right choice and visit our family before you feed yours. Critchfield Meats, the meat specialist, family owned and operated since 1969. That's a great A choice, folks. Welcome uh, back from break, honey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> honey, I gotta say that a lot. Yeah, uh, we're a lot. with Food News and Juice. <laughs> hey, it's me out there. Uh, I'm loving this, by the way. Glam, don't you think? Just can't scratch. Uh -huh. Anyway, hey, you know what a fine journalist I am. Sure. Trained in the finest of techniques That's right. in journalism. And I get the news while I'm on my treadmill every morning. That's right. That's <laughs> That's well, there's how been I get plenty, it. plenty of news about bees and honey this year. Yeah, there is. And, and But I wanna turn our attention a little bit to beer. Beer. <laughs> they do mm -hmm. make. And we have our guests here with us, by the way, John, John Antonucci, who is with Lazy Dog. Lazy Dog. Honey. <laughs> I said Lucky Dog at one time. Anyway, and, and we're with Clay Guth Guthrie. Yes. <laughs> and this is getting to me, guys. It's making me lightheaded. With Dadant. Uh, beekeeping supplies, and we're right here with mm -hmm. those folks, and they're going to help us this morning with food news. But anyway, beer, uh, the big beers, the government's actually taking the side of little beer folks, like craft beers that do make with local honey and stuff. Talking about like small breweries uh, yeah, versus large yeah, big yeah. breweries? And there's big mergers taking place in the big guys, okay. and so they're taking up and saying that creates a uh, too much dominance. The other thing is vitamins, and these guys are experts on health benefits. They say stay away from vitamins, that there's some bad stuff coming out about vitamins. Hmm. And so uh, take your honey 
honey every day, right? Take so vitamins own. should be from natural sources like honey, like or honey. just from your food Well, in there general. is the truth, right? You know, we talk a little bit about in our interview in a moment, but what we're talking about here this morning, mm -hmm. two broad categories. One, there is the issue of bees. Uh, we're talking, this is a bee show today. Okay. And the buzz is colony Collapse disorder. Right. And then we also want to talk a little bit about honey, where it's going, health, and culture. Well, colony collapse disorder, that's kind of a, a, a weird term. that People have been looking for the answer to mm -hmm. that for a while. You, there's some, a few people have said that it's, it might be from cell phone towers. You've seen these large, you know, diminishing Radiation of, of, of climate colonies, but I don't think that's been the case, right? More importantly, I think there's been some kind of uh, mite that's been found from... The mite seems to be the culprit or maybe the keystone to it, and the mite seems to have a disease that's caused by a virus. Right. When the hive is in good health and not stressed, the hive takes care of, its, care of itself. But given the amount of transport that occurs with commercial beehives, moving from one place to another, one state to another for pollination, and also because of the stress of the environmental problems, the pesticides that are prevalent in both farming communities and suburban communities, uh, the hive is already stressed and it can't fight off the virus that's introduced by um, the mite. So it's not even the mite, it's actually a virus on the mite. It, we believe that's the case. Yeah, but talk a little bit about how important bees are to well, our food yeah, This is food important, process. guys, because... With, and without, agricultural money. With, yeah, without bees, we don't pollinate our crops. We don't pollinate our vegetables. We don't pollinate our fruit. So there is no food. I think Albert Einstein said uh, without bees in four years, the human race would be extinct. Uh, so they talk about a big collapse there. That's a, that's a big uh, big deal when it comes to just one little mite wiping out these these colonies and populations. But I guess more and more research is being done on this issue. And you're saying that it you know generally life takes care of itself as long as you take good care of your bees. Well, and that's true. And you have and as as residents in suburban communities and urban areas, minimizing the introduction of pesticides is starting point number one. Herbicides number two. Mm -hmm. um, lay back and then bees would, would come back. And see, Kentucky could be a shining kind of lamppost oh, because yeah, of some, some of our rural ways. areas, there really aren't a lot of uh, areas that are touched by pesticides. Whereas, you know, in the, throughout the Midwest or, or different parts of the United States, we might find that we've actually tainted our, our soils too much with pesticides and, you know, whatever might be out there. You know, so. the flip side of that, though, is there's a lot of city and, and suburban beekeeping, mm -hmm. which is adding Growing. hives to the population. I've heard there's a big, a big explosion in New York, right? Well, you knew about City, that, right? Yeah, yeah. I remember mm -hmm. back in the summer, there was the story about New York. Uh, bees, rogue bees were on the loose, but they were doing their job, right? That's and right. if you want to keep bees, then you kind of got to Well, the rogue bees are just job. looking for another place to house. Yeah. So that what, hive did so well, it moves. Why would, why would a city be a good place for bees? Because there's not pesticides and there's not soil and taints like that. I mean, tainted of stuff like mm -hmm. that, because I don't really know exactly well, a why flies, a city would be great for Yeah, a bee flies bees. about three miles to co collect its, its nectar. Yeah. Three so, miles. So if there, there's parkland nearby, a river course that's got stream, you know, mm -hmm. stream uh, plants along the side, you can find, the bee will find a, a way of surviving in that environment. The pure soil of that New York City. Great. That sounds great. Hey, you back to Eastern Kentucky. Sure. Appalachian olive oil. That's what they that's call what, it, right? <laughs> that's what we're going to call yeah. it. That's right. Extra virgin. <laughs> yeah, 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 there's a book written about folk remedies. It's uh, olive oil vinegar. That's one of your favorite things. That is very Honey good. and 1,001 1, other home remedies <laughs> 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 using good. honey. And I love that. And do you know that it can actually cure a hangover? You know, I'm going to test that theory. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We've had a great, great time with these folks sure. here today, and we're going to buy some bee supplies. I bet. Yeah. I'm going into the business. You've been listening to Food News and Shoes, and we'll be back. A European experience without leaving Lexington at Azur Restaurant and Patio. For lunch or dinner, enjoy excellent service and truly unique cuisine that will delight your senses. Unwind with award-winning cocktails or conduct business over a memorable meal. Every occasion is special at Azure Restaurant and Patio, located off Harrisburg Road in the Beaumont Center. Jeremy, the restaurant startup business is challenging. We should know. That's right. In business since 1954, Sea Superstore is the place to begin. Recondition equipment and the lease to purchase program can get you in and going in no time. Seaworth, with its dedicated staff, can help you plan with CAD services that provide a successful layout. Dan and his team will help you fill in the blanks with everything from soft drink machines to exhaust hoods. Come to Seaworth Superstore and make your dreams come true. Located at 1403 Versailles Road and SeaworthSuperstore.com. 
pure, raw, local honey. That's the quality from Lazy Dog Honey. High quality honey from the nectars of the bluegrass region of Central Kentucky with bee yards located in Central Kentucky and Southern Indiana, yielding both bee yard specific and regional blends for spring, summer, and autumn harvests. Taste the local quality of organic grown Lazy Dog Honey. Visit LazyDogHoney.com to order your locally grown honey today or call 502-320-6577. Why do chefs choose Lion's Farm beef? It's consistent, it's delicious, um, it's got great tenderness, and it's really good for you. This nutritional element of making healthy animals for healthy eating is a big component about why their beef is so delicious. I feel so lucky to be a chef in Kentucky because the best way to express care for someone is to make them something to eat, and I get to do that every single day. Lions Farm Beef, available at Critchfield Meats and lionsfarm.com. Welcome back from break with food, news, and shoes. And Jeremy, we've got some great interviews here today. We are in a great place. Uh, by the way, it is me. And how do you scratch your looks, nose in this thing? It looks like it looks worse. <laughs> and why did my nose start itching just when I put it all on? It, it looks like I more like E.T. Coat coat than, but we're actually at at the uh, yeah. Dadant Beekeeping Supplies, and this yeah. is the largest manufacturer of beekeeping supplies in the nation. Yeah, yeah. The oldest and largest, right? John Antonucci, right. who and, is with. And yeah. That's right. Clay Guthrie, who's the, the GM or manager here for this branch, and there's branches all over the nation. This is a big deal. Yeah. And beekeeping has been going on for a long time, right? That's lucky correct. dog is your thing, right? Lazy dog. La <laughs> lazy <laughs> dog. I hope it's lucky, oh, but no. it's lazy as well. <laughs> Did that dog get lucky or what? <laughs> well, let's get back on bees. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, tell us about how, first of all, you go, or you go. Okay. Tell us about this company that we're discovering. Well, Daydant and Son is America's oldest and largest manufacturer uh -huh. of beekeeping equipment. Um, this year we're actually celebrating our 150th anniversary of doing business. Uh, we manufacture and supply the beekeeping industry with everything they need to uh, to put bees in boxes, <laughs> suits, dress them up, um, you know, beeswax foundation, combs, bottles, containers, uh, the equipment Who to extract the honey from the hive. Uh, <laughs> we also manufacture uh, candles and yeah. uh, beeswax candles and different things. And uh, also just, just anything that has to do with beekeeping. You think we can bees do this on their own, but there's this whole set of accoutrements here that looks <laughs> like it's serious never business. Knew. Yeah, and look at this display over here of the end product. We love that. That cool. is great. And tell us about your business. Well, I pick up where, where Clay sort of ends. I take his equipment and his materials and work with bees to produce honey. and. By and large, I have to make sure that they're just comfortable where the hives are located, make sure they're well fed during the off season, late in the winter and early in the summer. We actually put food back in because during the summer months we're stealing food. And now to our, to our viewers, what exactly do you feed bees? You feed them back either honey mixed with water or some form of sugar. I see. Protein. What's the process? Like, is this like year round or my grandfather had bees up on the hillside I suddenly remembered when we were going to do this uh, and learn about bees and he would talk about robbing the bees that seems like it was certain to certain times of the year yeah what happens is that with the spring bloom typically earlier than we see flowers the trees will start to blossom the bees will fly to the trees bring back nectar into the hives as well as pollen mm -hmm. that really starts the production cycle in the hive the hive is is reduced in size during the winter months, now it's going to explode. It's going to go from a few thousand bees to 60,000 bees in the middle of the summer. Mm -hmm. And two-thirds of those bees are flying every day to go out, collect nectar, bring them back to the hive. Uh, the nectar is high in water content. It's got sugar in it. The bees, through uh, digestive process and by uh, condensing or evaporating the water in the hive, slowly convert that nectar into what we know, know as honey. When it reaches a water percentage that is around 15, 17 percent, they cap it and they set it aside for winter months when they're going to need it. Now well, you said I'm they ready go, to out. go out and rob the bees. <laughs> <laughs> well, they say they go out and they collect different, you know, nectar. And is that what's responsible for flavoring the honey? Because we got lots of different types in the kitchen yeah. that I know. I mean, I've, I use different, even yours right now. I've got three different varieties of lazy dog yeah, honey. Yeah, and look at the different colors and and that. I, I know I was looking on your website and like the different. Yes. Millie, like down by the Kentucky River, might I, taste I differently. I segregate my honeys by by bee yard, and those bee yards by geography. So I've got twelve different yards and twelve different geographies of Kentucky. Is that amazing? Mm -hmm. And I segregate that honey, and I bottle that honey separately. 
and the difference in aroma, color, and flavor is remarkable. One bee colony to the next, one bee yard to the next, and season to season. So typically in Kentucky, you see the honey is getting darker as the season progresses. The lightest oh. honey is early, the darker honey is midsummer, late that summer, fall. It's like they all have yeah. their own family recipe or something. I right? love exactly. that. Exactly. It's what now, they're feeding on. How do you all work together? Let's let's because well, you have all this supply stuff, been in business for 150 years, right. uh, branches all over the country, uh -huh. headquartered in Illinois. We're so lucky we have one here. It's only like Correct. five states. Right. So we're cool. But mm -hmm. how do y'all work together? Well, then? Typically, when uh, when John says the bees start out in the spring, mm -hmm. uh, people can purchase a package of bees from us, and how this many? this package would have about roughly three pounds of bees, which is average you of, of, of ten to twelve. <laughs> yeah. They get them on a little scale. Yeah, they put each bee on a scale, and, but about ten to twelve thousand bees. Wow. And then, as he said earlier, they grow to to around sixty thousand to a full blown colony. So yeah. what we do is we supply. The, the equipment and the tools and, and even uh, sometimes even beyond tools, especially with people that are, you know, we don't have to do this with John, but like with people who are backyard beekeepers who just have one or two colonies and they've never really kept bees before, uh -huh. we also supply them and, and provide them with experience and knowledge to help them get the bees from a package into a full-blown colony. Is the queen in there? The queen is typically in a smaller cage down inside the package. Really? Sure so is. there is like actually a queen? Well, there is a queen. So they already have loyalty to her, you know, typically, yes. when the package arrives. Mm -hmm. now, How do you know it's the queen? There's a lot to this too mm -hmm. in terms of like, is, are most of your customers farmers or is it mostly independent people? Because back in the, in the old days, we, we had to have bees to, to farm, correct? Sorry. Correct. You know, actually, we're seeing a, a big shift uh, in in beekeeping. Typically, it was it was the commercial industry that drove beekeeping, such as pollinators uh, pollinating almonds out in California or citrus in Florida. But now we're seeing a lot of uh, a lot of beekeepers who really just want to get back to the roots and provide uh -huh. good like food that's quality, where they yeah. know where it came from. Yeah. And in order to do that, to get healthy fruits and vegetables. Bees are, are vital in the pollination part of that. Yeah. So they're, they're keeping one or two colonies of bees in their backyard. And, and talking about health, you know, they say local honey. If you like eat a certain like honey every day. That's like right. That's the theory local. is that your allergic reactions are a, is a reaction to a pollen. And if you're consuming honey, raw honey that has the pollen content in it, you slowly build up immunities from those pollens that are embedded in the honey and thus have a, a lesser reaction come that season of the year. Now, if I go in a grocery store and I buy a jar of honey, but it doesn't say raw, is there a difference? There's a remarkable difference. It's typically, uh, raw honey is, is, is only lightly filtered to remove wax particles and okay. the lust. All the pollen flows through it. The grocery store honey typically has to be highly refined and, and filtered so that it doesn't crystallize on the shelf because ah, that's a problem for the grocer. Mm -hmm. okay. For a small beekeeper, Keeping it liquid is a, is a little problem, and people who are used to consuming raw honey have no problem re-liquefying re it. Yeah, I was going to say, that does really, that's not detrimental at all to the honey, from what I understand, right? And there's no. an easy way to kind of, if you buy local honey in a farmer's market or from guys like you, you can easily get it back to liquid form, right? Take water, bring it to a boil, turn the heat off, mm -hmm. set the jar in, let it go. Right. Tell us about, there's an event in March to take advantage of this growing interest, and our folks need to know about that. For 20-some years, uh, the state beekeeping associations had a conference, a school for beekeepers in Frankfort, Kentucky. So what the local community has done is piggybacked on top of that. There'll be anywhere from four to 500 people will show up mm -hmm. for the beekeeping school. We've launched a community effort to have a variety of activities, kids' art contests, essay contests. Uh, there's a paint your hive contest that the hives will be auctioned off at the school that. to raise money for the schools. Uh, that we've had movies about bees. We've had, and there's just a wide range of activities uh, that you can get to on Capital City Beekeepers Association Facebook okay. page. All right. Uh, March 7, 8, and 9 are 7, critical. 8, and 9. There'll be a, a, a beekeeper's jam on Friday evening mm -hmm. the, the 8th at Buddy's Pizza. And there we will have announced the winner of the of the city bee, beehive hairdo contest. Hairdo, I'm in. <laughs> ah. So lots of fun around it, but really trying to educate folks that they have a, an important role Glamorous. to play in the protection of the bees. That's All right, great. we've been uh, sitting here today with John and Clay, and we're in the midst of a great bee keeping supply place and and local honey being grown. And we'll be back after break with a cooking segment about honey. The 
Capital City Beekeepers Association is a proud sponsor of Bee Friendly Frankfurt, March 8th and 9th, with a wide variety of activities to complement the annual Bluegrass Beekeeper School at Kentucky State University, including the beekeeping equipment and plant swap, tea and honey tastings, mead tastings, the beehive hairdo contest, and all the honey-themed meals and treats you can eat. For a full schedule of activities and other information, visit Capital City Beekeepers on Facebook. Today's shoppers are informed. When shopping for the family meal, today's shopper chooses Critchfield Meats for fresh, all-natural quality meats, guaranteed. Make the right choice and visit our family before you feed yours. Critchfield Meats, the meat specialist, family owned and operated since 1969. That's a great A choice, folks. A European experience without leaving Lexington at Azure Restaurant and Patio. For lunch or dinner, enjoy excellent service and truly unique cuisine that will delight your senses. Unwind with award-winning cocktails or conduct business over a memorable meal. Every occasion is special at Azure Restaurant and Patio, located off Harrisburg Road in the Beaumont Center. Welcome back to Food News and Shoes, and um, today we're going to, <laughs> we're continuing with the bee theme. Right. We have had such a great time talking about yeah. bees and, and honey Try and Try not to get stung. No, they're not dangerous. But no, we, we saw some great honey, and I've got a great recipe for it, yeah, too. Yeah, and it's called Lazy Dog. Lazy Dog. I've seen a lot of those. It's a great name. Anderson County Honey. Mm -hmm. I love that. So okay. to accentuate the honey and the great flavors of honey, we're going to use pretty much an all-local dish here. We're going to use some Chautauqua Farms mushrooms. Those are beautiful. Some nice honey glazed shallots, lots of the honey, some Gruyere cheese. Mm -hmm. We're going to make a nice tart. Oh, and to do so that, good. I usually start with puff pastry. Have you ever seen this before? No. It comes in a sheet. You can buy it. I, I would suggest getting it. it because making yeah. puff pastry is an ordeal. But you can get this stuff in the freezer case, and it comes in sheets. And I used to take the sheets and use some kind of you know round cutter. Yeah. If you want to use a cookie cutter and make you smaller cutters, that's fine. You do a lot of tarts at Azor. I do. Uh -huh. And this is how they're done. So yeah. uh, we'll kind of stamp out a round shape and put that on a baking tray with parchment. You don't want it to stick. Let me try. Let me try. Okay, you can do the next one. Right there. It's like a, being a little girl and playing cook. Mm-hmm. You gotta oh, press a little harder than that. <laughs> See, I'm such a failure. There you go. Put All right. it. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> So anyway, the puff pastry, you can use this for other little things, make smaller tarts. Uh -huh. Don't waste it though. It's like cookie it's still dough, good. like mm -hmm. sugar cookie dough. Exactly. Okay. This stuff, you just want to pierce it several times. Because this pastry, is it's butter leaven, it's mm -hmm. going to really pop up and get puffy. Okay. But if you don't kind of give it some release for, you know, let the gases and the moisture release with these little holes, it goes crazy in the oven. So we're going to make these little punctures in it so it has some way for when that um, water yeah. vaporizes, has a, has a place for it to go. So this goes in the oven. We're okay. going to let them puff up. And in the meantime, we're going to caramelize these shallots and mushrooms with that nice and local that honey. stove top kind of stuff sounds good. Sure. So, Jeremy, yeah. one of the important things that we know is that honey mm -hmm. is so precious because the origins of honey start with the these bees, guys. right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And and we know that honey actually, and we, well, have, we've covered some of this in Food News and various ways, but... You know, we just need to emphasize how important honey is in the well, cycle of life. And bees in general and the pollination of our fruits mm -hmm. and vegetables. Yeah, they, I mean, we basically, we don't eat without bees. That's right. So these guys, are, you know, even though they sting, they're kind of essential. Yeah. So anyway, into the skillet with uh, shallots. And then... Plain old... The thing about these is you really want to just kind of sit there and let them yeah, cook. Let them cook. For a very, very long time until they're nice and dark. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, we're going to add our mushrooms too. And once the mushrooms are cooked, we can. Um, Any and, you kind of see here, specific kind of mushrooms, because these are all different kinds and colors. Well, these are local okay, mushrooms gosh. from Chautauqua Farms, and uh, this is a shiitake. This is an oyster mushroom. That's like a, a kind of cluster, isn't it? <laughs> but they're really, really good. Oh, I know. And the know. thing about these, I don't really even chop them. I just kind of fold uh -huh. them into the pan and let them cook and let them sear. Just let them do their thing. Let them do their thing. All right, Jeremy. Now what? So I've got a little bit of nice color on these shallots. Oh, they're they're starting to caramelize. And smell is out of the smell. Mesmerizing. Just in oil. That's all. Yeah, it's this in. is yeah. olive oil. But now we're gonna kind of push them to the side okay. and create a little bit of room for these mushrooms. At this point, though, let I like me to in, use. Let me in. 
a little bit of butter. Chicken mushrooms? So I love the way the okay. uh, earthy earthiness of the olive oil is in there and yeah. the creaminess of the butter adds right. to it. So notice I didn't really even chop these mushrooms. I'm just kind of folding them in let there. Them, let them. And I don't let really want to move them either. I just want to sit uh -huh. there and let them caramelize or actually sear and roast in the pan. What are those yellow ones again? These are called oyster mushrooms, the yellow oyster mushroom. Like I said, these come from Shatawe Farms. Yeah. And, sh and uh, they're really, really good. And then what are the others? Uh, this is the shiitake mushroom. Okay. And these are grown locally here in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Wonderful stuff. So we'll let those kind of sear, get cooked okay. up, and then we'll put them on our puff pastry tart. Oh, sounds great. So great. We got super nice color on these. Oh, I could eat just that alone. It's delicious. Now, what oh, I'm going to do perfectly is... Perfectly browned, too, I think. We and the sweetness is coming notice. out. Uh -huh. Fragrance is great. So mm -hmm. deglaze a little bit of sherry. Sherry, yeah. Uh -huh. And I'm going to finish with some fresh herbs. Uh-huh. Kind of stir those up. Oh, look how you can do that. And then nice amount of that good oh, local honey in there. lazy dog. Oh, and, this is just going to be wonderful. And if you could, a little bit more yeah. fresh herbs. Uh-huh. And a little bit of butter right at the end. And those are finished. You go right <laughs> on that puff pastry tart. Oh, promise you'll make this at the restaurant. Now what do we do? We got perfectly cooked shallots, perfectly mm -hmm. mushrooms, lots of local honey and some cherry wine. These are little puff pastry things that came out of the oven. Oh, they're Watch, beautiful. Watch, I'm gonna push them down a little bit right in the center and make a well, right? Uh -huh. And I'll that's gonna well. give us a nice way to hold all this goodness. Mm. Glazed this up good. mushrooms and shallots. Yeah, and right then you could also pastry. add other things, right? I mean, <laughs> if you wanted to really jazz it up even more. Yeah, Although, bacon. why would you? You know, this is bacon. Yeah. Bacon, <laughs> now you're talking. That's right. So in there and with, remember, it has that honey. Lots there, of that, it, too. Uh, Did not spare the honey. We're going to save all this juice because we're going to garnish the top oh, of that tart oh, with that, that juice leftover is juice. Delicious. So anyway, yeah. now, now that we, we have, have our mushrooms tart, we've got lots of Gruyere cheese. And you could use any kind of cheese, but you and I have a preference for this, I, yeah, right? I think this is, you know, mushrooms and Gruyere, uh -huh. a great combination. And don't hold back, put a lot of it on there. Oh, for sure. And go right back into the oven, just to brown and melt the cheese, uh -huh. and these things are finished. All right, so Gruyere, away from those. <laughs> mushroom shallots, <laughs> lots of honey. These things are browned up and looking look beautiful. Look how pretty. And nice and warm. Look at the gooey cheese. Oh, Come that on. cheese. Anyway, mm. not onto a nice little bed of salad if you want. I can, you know, I put candied nuts on these sometimes. That's really oh, good. Oh, yeah, candied nuts. But then remember that nice juice we saved from oh, the honey yeah. and the mushrooms? Well, I licked up about half of it, but. Yeah, I gotta put lots of that on there. Oh. And there's a great oh. way to use oh. local honey and mushrooms mm. and cheese. Fabulous way to, way to I go. I love it. Can't wait for you to try it. Yeah, I will too. You've been listening to Food News and Chews. We'll see you next week. Advertise your product or service on shows like this one. Contact Media 7 Broadcasting today. Call 859-317-4565 or email sales at m7bg.com. Reach potential new customers in the Louisville, Lexington, and other Central Kentucky areas. Get your new ad produced for free by Media 7's audio and video professionals. Call 859-317-4565 today and let Media 7 create a marketing plan for you.